Hello and welcome, my name is Toronto Chico, and today we are continuing diagramming artwork and photography so that we can learn about both lighting and composition. Today we're going to be talking about this painting by Shriek, which is a still life with thistle painting. Now what really drew me to this was the really hard contrast between the flowers themselves, and especially in their light tones, which you'd almost call that they're clipping in terms of a phot photographic sense, but also we're clipping in the shadows too with how dark that black is. That really intense contrast really drew me to this image. Now this one might be a little bit more simple technically than some others. It doesn't seem to have 15 different lights being used to light this, but getting the lights placed and having the right exposure is really what makes the image here pop because it creates that really amazing contrast. Other factors here are things like the actual details in the image, and for an image maker that's using photographic mediums, we're gonna be able to get some of those kind of details with not only choosing if we're gonna capture in digital or film, and also our lens choices and the lack of or inclusion of filtering. But let's first start by just talking about the image itself like we usually do. So like I said, we have this really amazing, incredibly dark tone back here. And I want to make sure that we can try to replicate that. But we also have these really, really amazing highlights that are almost what you might call clipping because of how bright they are. We're almost losing detail right there, but it's just on that edge especially like with this white one up here, you can see just little tiny shadows between the petals, but the white itself is just so pure and so bright. And I really like that and I wanna to try to replicate that. Now, just in terms of like the actual shape of the light, we can see shadows right here and over here that kind of tell us the angle of our light. It's coming left to right we can tell by both the density of the shadow and also how the edge is not diffused that this is a hard light source. That would also make sense because the light is not spreading to the back wall nearly as much as it would if it was a larger, softer source. And that is helping create that really intense black and that contrast because of the lack of light. Now we do on the other side though, in line with that shadow, have light falling on the wall where we do get exposure. Now this is still much more of a underexposed tone than the flowers themselves. The flowers are almost pushing overexposure in the middle. They're getting proper exposure on the side over here. And then on the wall back here, we are just a little bit under in terms of the exposure. As usual, I'm gonna be using my cinematography diagram template that I built for Dryo. If you wanna get this free template, it's available on my Patreon for free. I've linked that in the video's description down below. There you can also subscribe on Patreon for more videos like this one and to support me in making more diagrams and other cinematography videos on this channel. Um, this tool set will help us put together this image. So I usually start by making a room shape, even if we're not talking about it being a room in particular. Um, but we can start with something that looks like this. And I would say that we can use a backdrop this time because this wall back here looks backdrop like, it looks like a potentially painted backdrop. Um, so we'll put that there. And then we're going to get a plant and we're gonna make sure we color that green here. And then we're gonna get a nice table for it to sit on. What kind of table do we want? And we're gonna send that to the back. I'm gonna make this kind of a brown cream color because that's the color of the table. And uh, you know, it's, it's like a marble, I think. And so we wanna get those kinds of similar tones for our recreation here. But this plant is sitting dead in the center of our frame. Now, in the actual painting itself, we have kind of this main pot with the flowers, we have a side pot, and then we have this marble um, relief sculpture that is really gorgeous. And so that's what I was saying earlier, if you wanna get the details of the relief, you wanna get the details of the petals, those are choices that are more up to lensing in particular, but by using hard light, we accentuate the petal shape 
and we can get those finer details to have contrast um, basically with each other and then through our lens choice we can get that captured um, because it will have enough fidelity coming into our image capture then if you're choosing to shoot on film or digital different choices there can make sure that those are represented in your final image so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a Fresnel and we're going to put that at roughly a 45 degree angle. You can tell where the shadows are as we looked at and we're going to put that there. So I do think that the light is coming slightly top down and that would be why the circle of the light falling on the wall doesn't actually reach out of the frame on the top. Now that doesn't mean that it is super top down in terms of like a light that's in the ceiling, especially for when this was painted, but it does mean that we have a little bit of an angle and that helps with the kind of shadow length that we can see here. So we're going to put it at about a 45 degree angle. Um, the actual angle could be like a little less, a little bit more, but we're just going to put it there and we're going to pull up a light pathway. And the thing is about this is that we really want to control the shape of the light. So I'm not going to use just the Fresnel. I'm also going to be using barn doors. The Fresnel is going to shape the light itself and make the light harder through the lens of the light. The Fresnel is going to make it incredibly directional, but we also want to be able to control the spill on the back wall up here. So we're going to use those barn doors to do some extra shaping outside of the Fresnel. Now this is all going to be attached to a lamp. So this could be a lamp that includes all of the Fresnel and barn doors all in one package. That could be something like at a tungsten airy Fresnel lamp. You could also use a Bowens mount lamp. That would be something like a GVM PADS, basically any of the aperture ones or some other ones that have that Bowens mount on the front. That would let you attach a Fresnel lens like the aperture Fresnel and then barn doors onto the Fresnel itself. Um, so there's a couple different ways you can even choose to do that depending on your budget and access to tools. So with all of this, we are now taking that light from that lamp and we're going to be focusing it in through the Fresnel lens and we're gonna use those barn doors to just kind of shape the light so that it doesn't fall too much on the back wall right there. Now, whether or not this is flood or spot is up to kind of how far away it would be. Um, I'd say that this looks a little bit closer to spot than flood. You might get a larger circle of light if it was towards the flood side. It could be somewhere in between, but like I said, that is different based upon how far away you put the lamp. Now, our camera placement here is relatively simple. It is pretty much just straight onto this table, um, especially because you can tell that right here, the edge of the table is pretty much in line with the edge of the painting itself. So we just put our, put it right there. And this is pretty much what we're looking at. We are getting the light on the front edge of the table right here. And we are going to be creating this shadow uh, and this shadow as the light path goes across that plant. So you can tell that the light will be hitting the edge of the table right here and going all the way across. It should then create this shadow and this shadow as it passes. It will fall onto the backdrop at least somewhat and we should kind of, if you look at this center, uh, center line of this painting, this is on that like right quarter. This should have a little bit of that light falling on that right corner. And so this is a relatively easy setup, but the details that we're having in it, it are what really make it pop. We're using that Fresnel to create edge contrast because of how directional that light is. We're using the barn doors to shape the light. So it's a relatively easy setup, but the concepts that we're using here are important for us to understand so that we can use them to create more detail in our image. Um, or on the opposite side, if we want to have an image that is really bright but doesn't have necessarily as many details to it, we can use softer light. And learning these kinds of techniques and these differences are how we expand our tool set for how we light scenes. So yeah, you might not be filming still lives, but you're gonna be filming a scene that might need more detail or a close-up of something that might need more detail. And so you can say, well, maybe harder light will fit for this better so that we can see all of the little aspects of the image because of that edge contrast that's being created. Now, 
depending exactly on how the lighting ends up looking for this, you could do something like take a lantern and have the lantern on the other side of the table here just to raise that shadow up just a little bit and help with getting more exposure on the edges on this side of the image. But you want to be careful because something that's a hallmark of this look is how deep these shadows are down here and the shadow in the back. So you wouldn't necessarily want to use this unless you needed that exposure boost because the main focus is really coming from that hard light of the Fresnel on the left side. So that about wraps up this lighting diagram. Um, I think this is a really, really gorgeous still life and I really like how contrasty it is. Many still lifes have contrast but the level of contrast being so dark up here in the corner and so bright here on the white flowers just really drew my eye to this. I really, really like this image and I'm glad that I was able to kind of talk about it today in this episode. As I said a few minutes ago, if you want to get this free filmmaking template for Drawio, which is a diagramming software that's also free, you can go over to my Patreon, it's linked down below, and get that template. I've already created all of these tools up here in the top that are just right there and ready for you to start diagramming your own images, whether or not that is you breaking down a reference for yourself or taking your script and translating it into lighting diagrams that you're gonna be able to shoot with. You can subscribe to my channel for more lighting diagram videos like this one, as well as lots more content about micro-budget cinematography and micro-budget filmmaking in general. If you want to join me on Patreon, my Patreon is also linked down below, as well as my Ko-fi page. I do have affiliate links for the types of gear that I have mentioned in this video. If you want to purchase any of those pieces of equipment, those affiliate links help support me making videos for this channel. If you have any questions about how lighting setups like this can function for your project, please leave in the comments down below and I will see if I can help you out with those questions. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day.